Adeline, yes. uh, could you tell me how this fair changed the landscape of the art market in Asia for you? Um, well, I've been at this for, this is my third show, and I think the one thing that's become very clear is that this fair has become very much the meeting place for Asia. Um, it's the one year that everyone comes together, and I think it's also really incredible in the sense that you know, like we not only just have the Asians coming t from different parts of the world, you know, to Hong Kong, but you also have then the other side of the world coming to join us. But then I think, uh, apart from just being the meeting point, I think there's so much that happens during these five days. And um, and in terms of the art market, in relation to your question, I think the one thing that has really struck me is how through meeting here in Hong Kong has also sparked a number of um, partnerships. So I think one of the clearest, for example, is the joint booth between Krupper Tuscany Ziedler and Antenna Space between Berlin and Shanghai. They actually met because of this fair and became friends and then decided to work together. Oh, nice. And I think we have a number of these um, examples as well, like for example, Bleacher Hurtling with Liu Zhu some time ago, for example. Yeah. You know, and now Leo with David Kordansky and Pilar, for example, are also working together. And then I think on the Asian front, for example, like Silver Lens, uh, Roth Projects, Edouard Malang. So I think it's really interesting, this new uh, partnerships that have come across, that, that has, m I think in a way, because of Art Basel, because of meeting here and because of becoming friends, that, they, that you have these um, interesting allies and partnerships, you know. And, and I think um, it's, it's also really, uh, for me, it's almost like an, it's not an, it's nothing new, but it's also to me, but it feels like a new model of working together. Yeah, nice. Um, which is... But also, don't you think that the fair open in a way, the eyes? Oh, absolutely. Of the Chinese to Western Absolutely. Art? I think it opened, not only the Chinese, I think it opened everyone's eyes in Asia to not only Western art, but art from Asia. Because I think so much, so many times we kind of forget our own neighbors that we, you know, Typically, mm. you tend to travel very far, yeah. Like so, say, say someone from Malaysia, Singapore, you know, the UK or or LA is is the destination. But then you forget about all the other countries around Asia, right? Oh, like, okay. So there's less of that. But so it emphasizes so consciousness about Asia. A certain extent, a certain consciousness. I think also because absolutely, I think it emphasizes. It also opens up the histories, which we, we may not know so much about. Like, for example, you know, as you can see, Korean art history, Japanese art history, that perhaps for some of us, because we don't speak the language or read, mm -hmm. we've not been able to access it up until now. But now Chinese are collecting and absolutely. And uh, I think Japanese art and absolutely. Korean art. And, and the Chinese are no longer collecting Chinese art, which is also very interesting. And if you think No about longer? Yeah, I mean, just in the sense that it's not just about Chinese art okay. anymore. I think it's, you know, I think the, the sort of kaleidoscope, the breadth is, is so much wider. And if you think about the younger collectors nowadays, like, what, 26, 27 years old, it's very eclectic. Their taste is so wide. It's almost impossible to say, you know, a lot of, especially a lot of journalists like to talk about trends, right? And mm. it's also almost impossible to actually pinpoint the so-called trends, so to speak. Yeah. So, uh, I don't want to be like the local trend. No, you're so.